Austrian named Henri Perrin. Prior to World War I, Perrin was a prominent Belgian historian whose main contribution to scholarship up to that point was a multi-volume history of Belgium that he was uh, in the process of writing when World War I intervened. When Belgium was occupied by the Germans, he opposed them. And as a consequence, he was tossed into a prisoner of war camp. And during his incarceration, he devised what would become known as the Perenne Thesis. And after the war and his release, he published it, most notably in a book he called Muhammad and Charlemagne. Now, before Perenne, most historians had used the supposed fall of Rome to Germanic barbarians, which they commonly dated to 476 AD, as the dividing line between antiquity and the Middle Ages. So in that viewpoint, the fall of Rome marked a clear separation between the classical world of ancient Greece and Rome and the civilizations of the Middle Ages. The Perrin thesis, on the other hand, proposed that the real moment of rupture occurred not in the 5th century, but about 200 years later, when the Arabic conquests split the Mediterranean into two halves a northern, mostly Christian one, and a southern, mostly Islamic one. Pren's thesis was actually based less on religion than on economics, because he argued that the Islamic conquests had effectively cut off the north-south and the east-west trade that up until that point had linked together all the shores of the Mediterranean. In Peren's view, for most of ancient history, the Mediterranean world was one unified economic and cultural area. But that fundamental unity was irrevocably shattered by the Arabic conquest. And he further posited that the takeover of the Western Roman Empire by barbarian kingdoms was really not so important as everybody had been assuming because those barbarian tribes just adopted and imitated most aspects of Roman culture. And because all those political changes didn't disrupt that fundamental underlying, underlying trade across the Mediterranean. The really clever part of Perrin's thesis, though, is the way in which it explains subsequent European history. Throughout antiquity, the most important political, economic, social, intellectual, and cultural developments had all been happening around the shores of the Mediterranean. For centuries, every great empire was a Mediterranean-based one. And their magnificent cities, such as Athens, uh, Alexandria, Constantinople, were all located on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. So in that perspective, the Mediterranean was the center and the focal point of civilization itself. And the great civilizations were all coastal ones. Adjacent inland areas, such as most of Europe and most of the Middle East, were just relegated to the status of being secondary, uh, subsidiary zones of, of much less importance. The Arabic conquests changed that, and they changed it forever. They broke the unity of the Mediterranean, and in doing so, they shattered the coastal region's domination over the hinterlands. So now, all of those once subordinate regions were no longer condemned to just remain in the shadow of more powerful Mediterranean civilizations. But finally, they were free to spin off on their own and to really develop. So it was that the Franks, a thoroughly Europe-based an inland empire could only rise to power once Europe was no longer held in thrall to the Mediterranean-based Eastern and Western Roman empires. This course keeps coming back to that link between cities and civilization. And as proof of Perrin's thesis, just think about the location of the great cities of this part of the world in the centuries before versus after the Arabic conquests. Before that event, all the great cities are cities of the Mediterranean coastline. 
Constantinople, Alexandria, Rome, Carthage, Antioch. But then think about the location of the capital cities of the first empires that arose after around 700 AD. Baghdad and Aachen. Both of those are hundreds of miles from the coast of the Mediterranean. And both of them are the centers of empires that were fundamentally oriented inland, away from the sea. And we see the same situation if, if we keep going forward in time from there. So later important cities, London, Paris, Florence, uh, Madrid, Damascus, Cairo, they're all inland. What the Islamic conquest did was to separate what used to be one world, the Mediterranean world, into three separate worlds, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, and situated on three different continents. Furthermore, each of these new worlds now effectively turn their backs on the Mediterranean Sea as the uh, wellspring of all political, economic, and cultural developments. And instead, they look to emerging inland centers, such as Aachen and Baghdad. This brings us to the famous six-word formulation of Peren's thesis. In the introduction to his best-known book, he wrote the following line. Without Muhammad, Charlemagne would be inconceivable. With that succinct statement, Peren is suggesting that if Muhammad had never come along and sparked the Arabic conquest, then Europe would have remained just an adjunct to the Mediterranean. And so the great European empire of Charlemagne, the precursor to all later great European empires, would never have had the opportunity to flourish. And so Europe itself might never have risen to prominence during the era of colonization. And obviously the entire subsequent course of history would have been profoundly different. Peren's thesis was uh, immediately influential and also immediately controversial. In fact, historians have been uh, actively arguing about it ever since. And the part of his thesis that has really uh, fared most poorly is probably his contention that the Islamic conquest killed most of the trade in the Mediterranean in the 9th century. More recent scholarship has shown that while Europe was indeed cut off from many goods as a result, there was still a lot that was being bought and sold across the boundary. We now have a more complex and nuanced understanding of early Mediterranean commerce than was available to Peren, and a good number of his specific contentions have been challenged. While details of his economic claims may have been undermined, what remains a powerful and compelling argument is that underlying assertion regarding the destruction of the unity of the Mediterranean and the subsequent uh, individual reorientation of Europe, Africa, and the Near East inwards upon themselves. We have only to open a newspaper or read an online article on current events to see the effects of that historical moment still being played out today. If you look at the cultural, linguistic, and religious boundaries that shape the world we live in today, they were laid down at this key moment. The modern boundaries between the countries around the Mediterranean that are Christian versus those that are Muslim are almost exactly those established in the 8th century during the initial wave of conquest. The same goes for those countries that today speak Arabic as opposed to one of the Romance or Germanic languages. The Arabic conquests of the 7th century were the moment when the modern map of Europe was drawn. By the way, there was one and only one major country that was part of those initial conquests that uh, today is not still an Arabic-speaking Muslim country. Can you figure out which country that is? The answer is Spain, which in 1492, after 800 years of Muslim occupation, expelled the Moors in a process known as the Reconquista. But Spain is really the exception that proves the rule. Because everywhere else, the Arabic conquests were decisive and permanent. If I had to pick 
a single historical event from this entire course that most explains the world today, it would probably be the Arabic conquest of the 7th century. These are what created the current boundaries of the modern maps of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East in terms of politics, language, religion, and culture. Somewhat ironically, it was also the Arabic conquests that freed barbarian Europe from its centuries-old domination by the Mediterranean world, and which set it upon a path that would ultimately lead to its conquest and or colonization of the entire rest of the world, including even Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. And all of that is beautifully summed up in and implied by Peren's simple statement, without Muhammad, Charlemagne would be inconceivable.